Good evening, everyone. Uh, Namaskar. Uh, my name is Paresh, and I think uh, Samajit has uh, spoken about a nice word for me. And thank you, Samajit, for that. And I also take this opportunity to thank uh, Ishre uh, East Chapter uh, for for giving me a chance to present and share my knowledge with all the all the all the people out there in the market uh, on the subject air distribution products and how we can use it effectively in distributing air in HVAC uh, in industry and it's it's a very interesting topic and I will try to make you know it's a, even more more uh, uh, try to create your more interest in this topic. So uh, well uh, before I you know uh, go into the depth of the uh, the my topic of uh, today's topic so i would you know uh, uh, talk about on a fact or i would say a myth you know uh, i think most of us is knowing that uh, what is a, i mean when is a person comfortable i mean normally we say that person is uh, thermally comfortable when their body heat loss equals their heat production without them sensing any changes in temperature you know and maintaining a temperature of let's say 22.8 to 25 degree and maximum velocity within an occupied zone. I mean, this is the area where we are concerned. Uh, uh, this is the area for which we all do uh, the air conditioning off and uh, where the velocity, uh, terminal velocity should not be more than 0.25 meter per second for cooling and 0.15 meter per second for a heating uh, applications. And this is as per the ASHRAE and ISO one, uh, ISO 7730, which 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 all of us are knowing. And so that is why we say, you know, 70% of all trouble caused in air conditioning systems for comfort are blamed on inadequate functioning of air distribution products. This is a very important product because you do whatever uh, you 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 buy whatever the expensive product of chillers or HUs or the fan and 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 you know, unless you have a nice properly selected technical product of air distribution products, it's very difficult to distribute in an uh, occupied zone. And this is the area where everybody of us, you know, feels the comfort. So that is why I say that, you know, it's a fact. Uh, uh, most people say it's a myth, but I would say it's a, it's a fact. And uh, during this slight process, probably you will be uh, going to agree with me that whatever I have tried to explain you, probably you will, you will get into it. Uh, well, you know, uh, before getting into it, you know, what is the significant parameters which is considered for comfort conditions? Uh, you know, it is thermal road, air change rate, AC, ACR, we say that, or air change rate per hour, whatever you say. Type of ADP, you know, air distribution products, be it be grill, diffuser, slot diffuser, or whatever the product, depending upon the type of application. Then you have a sizing of ADP. Airflow rate, of course, because uh, every ADP products had its own limitations. Yeah, uh, we cannot just choose any size uh, unless we have an idea of airflow rate. So that's airflow rate is also very important. And then you have an ADP positioning. That is also very important. You know where these products you are going to place uh, in in that particular occupied uh, zone, whether it's a downwards or upwards or on the wall. So positioning is very important. So all these you know uh, leads to what actually it gives. You know room air velocity, which is very important. Because we normally say that, uh, of course, it depends from country to country. Let's say in India, we say that 0.5 meter per second is the terminal velocity or the comfort velocity which we look for, and some and some of the uh, uh, people say that maybe 0.25 or 0.15 meter per second as a terminal velocity. So room air velocity is very important. Turbulence intensity that is sometimes creates a more noise level. Temperature gradient, that is also very important. If you have a mixed type of ventilation, which means that you are giving a fresh air from the top and getting the uh, return air exhaust from the bottom. So the whole temperature gradients will be there. You know, Maybe on the top, you will have about 16 to 17 degree and going down and it, it comes to 26. So it, it all depends on oh, what is the positioning of these air distribution product. And based on that, so temperature gradient is also plays very very important you know and also you know uh, this this exact prediction of velocity and the temperature profiles inside the conditioned space you know requires simultaneously solution of this mass you have a momentum and energy equations for conditioned space or occupied space so in generally we say that you know these these are the uh, 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 factors 
that affects the airflow and heat transfers inside the conditioner space. So, I mean, for us, you know, as a, a basic understanding for a room air distribution requires understanding of buoyancy effect. This is a one terminology which all should be knowing it while uh, we select a product. Uh, deflection of air streams, that is also very important. Over the period of uh, uh, explaining my slides, probably you'll come to know the deflection. What is this buoyancy or what is this quanta and what is the deflection of air streams and the behavior of a free stream jets. Normally, the, these locations and a type of uh, air distribution products do not affect the air distribution significantly, but then, but then positioning and then sizing plays a major role. So these are the significant parameters which must be considered for the comfort conditions. Before moving into it, I would like uh, you to know some terminology which is used in air distribution products. It's like a brief, uh, uh, quickly I will try to go through it. Throw, which uh, if you can see uh, this cursor, this is a throw. If, if, if the product is installed on a wall, you can see the straight line, uh, the maximum amount of air which is thrown uh, uh you know it's it's you know in in horizontal direction is called throw and then you have a drop this is a drop you can see that it's a vertical distance from the jet center line and supply outlet center line at a nominated throw you know this is a throw and this is a drop line so we call it drop or rise and what is a terminal velocity terminal velocity is the end velocity which we are concerned you know I mean, this is the velocity which we feel on our body when we are in an occupied zone. Envelope. Envelope is like the flow pattern. Envelope is like the area uh, 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 supplied by this this install air distribution products. This this complete area is called the envelope. Then you have expansion on a spread. I will talk on uh, this. Every product had its own expansion and spread area, depending upon the length, width of uh, uh, the, the product and whether it's on a wall or a ceiling, that also decides your the expansion and the spread. Then you have a free jet. You can see that the air which is getting induced and then uh, because of low pressure here, it get uh, sucked and then it throws out and it, it has the momentum in it, built in it and then it, 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 it follows the pattern as the air profile is. Then you have a ceiling uh, um, ceiling jet effect. You know this 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 is a very important in this air distribution uh, uh, product because uh, this you know this this whole process the ceiling effect you call it this is more like a conda effect. You know the negative or a low pressure area is created in between uh, the morning uh, this this moving air mass and the ceiling. Okay. Uh, near the supplier outlet and this low pressure area causes moving air mass to click to and flow close to the sailing surface and which increases the through so as we know that air and water if they have to travel if the moment they take a support the distance can go increase so in the same fashion you know if it uses the floor or the roof the its throw pattern gets increases occupied zone is the area where we are concerned of conditioning air. You see, this the man is standing here, and then you have a dotted air line, which you can see on your screen, which is coming up. So this area is conditioned air. And on this area where our whole uh, topic and the subject is about. Room velocity is the, is, is the velocity which is actually traveling here in occupied zone. So this is what uh, uh, it's all about. And then you have a temperature differential, which is the difference between a supply temperature and the room air temperature. Okay. And then few terminology, which is most of the manufacturers, I would say, used uh, uh, air distribution uh, pattern index. Uh, this is used to evaluate the performance of air distribution systems within a room or a zone. It is derived from the air velocity. And EDT, EDT is an effective temperature draft of the sampling points within a space considered. You know, within a space considered is more like a uh, the occupied zone, and uh, you know, but it is not a performance index for any individual air terminal device. This is very important for us to know that whenever it is a specific uh, statement that our product has this much of ADPI, but just for your information, ADPI is not for any single product. It is for that. ADPI is for that whole occupied area, you know, multiple of diffusers or multiple of grills or multi multiple of return uh, there. And the whole efficiency which comes out to be is, is defined as ADPI, you know. It's defined as a percentage of measurement taken within an occupied space where EDT 
which is effective draft temperature is between 1.5 to 1 Kelvin with the air velocity of 0.3 meter per second. With this is as per the Asher fundamentals. So if you read, uh, go into detail, if maybe if I get chance to present more on ADPI. So I will able to uh, explain you that, you know, ADPI is for a system, is for the whole occupied area. It's not for the single product. Plus, ADPI is good for the cooling applications, but it is never good for uh, it cannot be the efficiency criteria for a heating application. So this is uh, also one thing which you should know. Then talk about induction factor. The It defines, uh, you know, the entrainment of a room air by the air ejected from the outlet and as a result of the velocity of the outlet air. The air coming directly from the outlet is called a primary air. We know that the air which is actually coming from a air distribution product is called a primary air. The room air which is picked up and carried along by the primary air is called a secondary air. The entire stream composed of mixture of primary and secondary air is called the total air. So induction ratio is defined as, as a ratio of total air to the primary air. And sometimes we also say that, you know, better the mixing process which happens in between more becomes the ACH factor. So that's how they sometimes we say that the products having a higher induction factor is also give you a right, right product, which means the mixing in the with the with the room air or the secondary air happens fast. OK, so uh, uh, let's talk about what is the air stream theory about isothermal free jets. I think isothermal, most of us, we know that any manufacturers in their technical catalog, if they mention the isothermal free jets, Jets, which means that you must immediately understand the delta T is zero, means we are measuring the air velocity at a constant temperature. Be the sub, there will not be a temperature variance from the supply to the end. Delta T will remain same. So this is very important, you know, which all which which we all should know actually. And you know, this figure illustrates uh, uh, air pattern created by uh, this air at room temperature flowing into room through opening and free isothermal air jet. You know, it consists of four zones, which you can see it here in front of your uh, screen, you know, uh, zone one, zone two, zone three, and zone four. You know, by 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 uh, uh, looking at this picture, you yourself can feel or analyze that zone three is very important for us as a designer, because this is the, this is the uh, 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 zone where by this time the air uh, becomes stabilized, air becomes laminar, turbulence becomes drop down. It's less, the less turbulence is there because after that it loses its velocity and it comes down. So this is the zone three, which is a happening area for air, any air distribution products. And these lengths, these zones vary depending upon what terminal velocity, which you are looking at, you know, and here the induced air is happening much faster, you know. OK, so here you can see that, you know, this is exist velocity with the initial induction. Then you have a laminar induction, which is increases. And here it forms that. And then uh, your turbulent and uh, uh, reduces it, converts it into a laminar. Now, one thing also you, we need to understand, you know, this shape of opening of the symmetry of the room and the number of openings all have an effect on the angle of a spread, which is which is, you know, I mean, where it is installed, first thing. What is the size of this? Decides your, this is the angle of a spread, which you can see my uh, cursor here. This is the angle of a spread, which is like a 22 degree. And 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 it can be, you know, depending upon the product, it, it, it varies from 20 to 24 degree with an average of, I would say 22 degree. And it is also clear that, you know, uh, this injection means the air which is coming inside may be rewarded as an impact between the, injected air and indoor air. Since the pressure in the stream is constant and equal to the pressure of ambient air, the impulse is constant. Impulse, you understand, right? Impulse is constant throughout the air stream. And outlet impulse is therefore, we say, is always equal to the impulse in any cross section of the stream. I think we all know that, uh, uh, we all have studied, you know, principle of continuity because mass remains the same, you know. If air is displacing, then some other area is getting covered. So that is what uh, it's about air stream theory, which is uh, isothermal free jet, I would say. Then you have a uh, isovel. I think probably you cannot see here because of uh, this, but other, otherwise, what is isovel? Isovel is basically a, a velocity contour. If you see this point two, 
any point if you measure it will always have a 0.2 meter per second as a velocity and we say this as a isoval you know this term isoval refers to the points within a stream where overall speed is 0.2 or 0.3 or 0.4 you know and this is what the figure i tried to make you understand what the isoval is this is the also terminology most of the manufacturers use it so you should actually know uh, what the isoval is you know because you cannot have a different velocity on the same isoval no you can't have it so that is also very important for us to uh, understand okay what is this let's understand uh, the conda effect this is also very important i explained you before what the conda effect is because if you have to increase the throw you know from the wall which means that you need to take a help of something and this is here this this terminology which conda effect which comes into a picture you know it's 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 fitted it, this air distribution product is actually fitted sufficiently close to the surface and jet will adhere to the surface you know and uh, 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 you know and air between the ceiling and this airflow is swept along and since new air cannot flow in from above you know no air will come right no air will come because this is your inlet area it it hits this so new air will not come here you know so a negative pressure is obtained at the ceiling and and jet is attracted upwards and this is called actually a conda effect you know and it can be used to enable a cold air stream to stay up at the ceiling for a time before reaching down to the occupied zone this is very important that is why i i am emphasizing on it this terminology is very important on that and now one thing also for sure you we all should know that this y should be less than 300 mm in order to have a conda effect that is that is very important and one thing also you know uh, in in such scenarios i talked about before the angle of a spread you know where i said uh, the angle of a spread is lies between 22 20 to 24 degree and uh, predominantly on an average it's 22 degree but in such cases in such cases your angle of a spread becomes 30 degree you know almost 30 degree so that's how it also helps you uh, uh, to have a more throw then you have a uh, uh, next slide uh, occupied zone in a return flow wall mounted diffuser what it is you know if you see this you know primarily uh, uh, what we wanted here we want here in this picture from this picture we can uh, we can uh, understand that we want that this air this green air should not directly hit the occupied zone that's our purpose actually because the moment it heads directly to this occupied zone we will have a more turbulent and we will have a, a higher terminal velocity and then the person who is making this conference cannot be you know doing it properly because he will be feeling a cold and he will get sick after some time you know he will start having a headache so our, what our purpose is our purpose is not allow this air to immediately hit this occupied zone why because we want it this have a larger throw it goes here it hits here it reduces the velocity and then when it comes back it it will have the same velocity which we wanted to have let's say 0 0.15 0 0.2 meter per second whatever we wanted to have so that is why here the use of conda effect is very important okay very very important which which uh, we should uh, know the, know this okay and and also uh, most of the time when the air comes and enter into this uh, return air stream then only we will get the comfort this is this is very very uh, important for us to know that and also you know on this on the basis of requirement i mean concerning the maximum pers permissible speed in occupied zone we would be able to determine the final speed that can be permitted in the stream when it meets the wall okay so that's that's so uh, that's the key uh, to uh, this this now you see here you you have seen the slide and this is a slide which you see that what it shows it shows that let's say you get 0.2 meter per second here at the end of the wall you are having a free here uh, air which is coming out of the air terminal devices use you use a conda effect of course your y is less than 300 mm you use a conda effect it hits the wall the throws increases you have a 0.2 meter per second now when this air hit the wall and it returns back it it will have a 70 percent of this which means what 70 percent of 0.2 means 0.14 meter per second you will have a air in the occupied zone and which is your comfort 
this is what you actually need and this 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 is what actually i told you on the first slide so now you understand you should know the difference whenever there are a lot of catch you know when you are selecting any vendors when you are trying to understand you know what the terminal velocity is of course sometimes it's it's uh, it's illusion you know to work on okay i need 0.2 i need 6.6 .6 meter per second as a terminal velocity but at the end of the day what you need the air which is in the occupied zone a room air velocity and that's what your ashray standard says that you need 0 0.15 to 0 0.2 meter per second so that is very important you know what you are actually looking for i mean you cannot just select uh, the product as it is you know the technical things is very important in that case to find out what it is okay then we have a occupied zone in a written flow ceiling mounted diffuser I mean, this figure actually shows the pattern of airflow with the horizontal injection from the ceiling, the indoor air flows towards the center of the diffuser. If you see this, I think you are following with me, right? And if you see this, air using a conda effect, it goes straight. We call this as a radius of diffusion. It hits the wall, comes down, and it again gets sucked, you know? So this is, this, this, I mean, of course, we have used this four-way four, four -way diffuser here and uh, it's 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 getting it sucked now uh, i mean of course there will be a deposit of dust on the surface of the ceiling around the vent i think probably most of us has noticed whosoever is sitting on a cabin and you have a diffuser on your head you know so after some times probably you may notice that there are some deposits uh, of a dust on your uh, on your head uh, on the diffuser of course which means as your diffuser is playing using a conda effect it goes straight it hits comes to the occupied zone and gets up and also i mean you can you should actually immediately point out if you are sitting just below this diffuser just below this diffuser and you are feeling a cold so it means something is wrong either your product you have selected is not right because it is not using a properly contact effect first thing secondly either you have selected the product which gives a more phase velocity which in turn you have a more terminal velocity again this is not a right product thirdly either you have selected oversized diffuser okay when you have a product oversized then also there is a problem or undersized so you have to actually select the right product you have to actually select the right product okay uh, maximum length of air jet i think this picture itself probably you will you will must be getting some idea you know what this picture is talks about uh, I mean, of course, this penetration will stop when the cross section of the air stream is more than 40% of the cross section of the room, you know. Uh, so actual shape of room is, is, is very relevant, is very relevant to the flow pattern. When we say the stream cross section constitute approximately 40% of rooms cross section, the induction of indoor air ceases. That's very important, guys. I mean, we should know this, you know. And, you know, this means that what? You know, uh, stream rotates here. You see the picture. Stream rotates. It it ends here. It rotates here. It rotates here. It ceases here. You know, and begins to feed the induction air. So increasing the speed will not help. I mean, if you say that you pump in more air, no, it will not help because every air has its own limit or own way of using a conductor of course at the end here it has to come down so increasing injection speed will not have penetration will be the same whatever velocity you want to keep the penetration will be the same because the profile of product in such a way you have selected you know you are not going to change the diffuser you know or or, or the grill or the product which you have installed you know but the air speed will increase both within the air stream and the in the room so if you see in this picture you will find after a certain location, after a certain distance, you have an, another eddy, you know, ADS. You know, it has its own, the air which is coming, blue one, which is coming to the red zone with a very low velocity, and it, it has its own air mixture. And this area is the most polluted air. This area is the most polluted, most uncomfortable area. You know, it, it has its own eddies, you know. The stream will penetrate right into the room if the relationship between room depth and root room height is less than three. Then it makes sense, you know. This one and this then. If it is less than three, of course you are a, you have selected the right product. Otherwise, it will have a eddy currents. You know, you must have uh, studied the eddy uh, currents and in, 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 in physics. Uh, all the electrical engineers probably know this. So in the same way, you have a eddy as you know. Now. 
let's talk about what is non isothermal jet i have explained you guys ki all the data mentioned in any manufacturer's technical catalog will have isothermal data which means delta t is zero which means they throw whatever they specify is based on the same temperature the air has you know so actually when you are using a product on a site it may vary a lot comparison to the product which has been shown in a catalog so we have to aware of it and probably we should ask from any of the supplier when the temperature is i mean at the supply you have maybe 18 and in the end you need 24 what would be the air flow pattern you know that is the actual scenario every manufacturer should be able to tell you now let's talk about non isothermal jet if you see this dotted line you i think you can see this dotted line okay if this dotted line if you see this is the air flow when you have a isothermal jet okay this will be the throw when you have a isothermal jet but but gentlemen if the delta t varies here it is something else and the end here it is something else let's say here it you have 18 degree and here it's 24 then probably your throw will not be till here and it will drop down it will just drop down you know so flow will become more complex since thermal forces you know thermal forces because the temperature is changing we call it thermal forces will influence the stream in vertical plane and due to thermal forces the air stream will deflect and it will come down okay and this is the point of release of the stream which we say you know here which we say the point of release okay i think you can see here this is the point of release where it it, it loses this and for an uh, you know temperature adhering air stream there are two forces acting in the vertical plane one is conda effect which we all know of course it is using a conda effect you can see it here and also also uh you have a thermal force why thermal force because you have a temperature difference had it been no uh variation had it been isothermal then probably it's a different story but it's here thermal force acts because you have a non isothermal case in that case you know the stream becomes downwards at a given distance from the outflow to the thermal force becomes dominant and the stream stream leaves the ceiling so that's what i try to i want to explain you what this uh, the flow pattern in a non isothermal case okay now uh, you can see it here right guys you can see it here the supply of cold air i try to explain about the cold air you have seen in my previous slide this is a non isothermal conditions here you can see the throw is length is less you know in non isothermal condition the throw is less but in isothermal condition the throw is more maybe maybe the terminal velocity in both the cases will be same you know both the cases will be terminal velocity will be the same but then the throw reduces so what you have to do you have to do get a chart from manufacturers you know if what is the temperature difference here based on that what is the k factor and then you can correct your throw so you will get the correct throw for non isothermal conditions okay so let's say you have a 4 degree difference okay maybe you have a cooling or heating it depends you have a 4 degree difference and you go straight it is like 1.1 or 1 1 one as a k vector and then you do multiplying and this is at 0.2 meter per second you will able to know what is the throw so this is very important uh, which we all should know now Uh, uh let's talk about the obstacle effect on the air stream you know unfortunately it is very common for the air stream to be obstructed by any light fixture you have or uh, somebody uses a fan also on a ceiling uh, or 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 only a light fittings on a ceiling if these are too close to the diffusers or a grills and hang down too far you know the air will air stream will deflect are you with me yeah air stream will deflect and if the air stream will deflect what will happen it will immediately come into a aquified zone which we don't want and that is uh, i mean that is what uh, we don't want it to be and uh, our design is something else we wanted this uses a conda effect to go straight it hits wall and comes down because the moment it comes down straight it will have a higher velocity you know when it descend into the aquified zone it is therefore necessary to know it is very necessary to know what is distance a you know and which we can see from the diagram you know what is distance a minimum distance to the obstacle and throw you know this one and then uh, 
uh, uh, for the air stream to remain unimpeded so that air stream should not lease lose it you know so uh, the and 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 also we wanted to have a quanta effect in place so that is uh, from the curve probably you can find out what should be the minimum distance so that uh, you know and which uh, uh, in, in the conda effect is maintained and also the height of an obstacle also so based on this you can actually find out okay or you can position let's say your architect decides guys i need a light in this place only for example now he has fixed you and you are fixed how do you how will you use and which place you will use this air distribution product then you need need to use this you know what is the height of the obstacle probably you know because your architect has fixed it then you should know what minimum distance you should need it in order to have a right product okay okay so uh, now what is this uh, induced airflow i think i've explained in my third slide what is the induced airflow you can see it here you know oh shit uh are you with me right you can listen my voice okay yeah yeah perfect yeah yeah okay great so uh, uh induce airflow which you can see it here uh, it's air which is coming here uh, and uh, this is the temperature difference t set okay and then you have a supply air velocity it can be two meter up to four meter per second i mean this thing also this is very important for us to know you know supply air velocity in uh, uh comfort where we work actually in the comfort area the air distribution product should not have more than three to four meter per second. I mean, otherwise you will never get what you wanted because your terminal velocity will be way high. So that is very important for us. You know, uh, uh, we should not have a very high terminal uh, phase velocity. So that is also very important. I mean, most of the people, what they do is, you know, they they in order to save a cost, they they select a product, uh, maybe uh, smaller in size. Let's say you wanted to use 450 by 450 diffuser. So instead of that, you, you have start using 300 by 300 because the cost is less. What will happen? The product will have a higher velocity. When you have a higher velocity, so probably your room air speed will be high. You will have a lot of turbulence. And uh, you, I, I mean, in this occupied zone, you will be never be comfortable, never be comfortable. So everything has to be as per the standard and everything as per the manufacturer's catalog it's 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 always good to ask any manufacturer what should which product can handle what air velocity or the phase velocity okay and room air speed this is what we need to maintain 0 0.15 to 0 0.25 it depending upon human to human or project to project some come some some customers of yours probably need 0 0.15 and some humans maybe need more air on the body so it really de it depends you can't stand right but limit should be in between this and yeah and then you have a, a, a outlet air velocity which should be equals to the same so in that case probably you don't need uh, a very uh, uh, the fan on a return air at a very uh, uh, it you don't need to suck a lot of air from the return air which also saves your energy now what this induce air you know so you can see it here you know uh, if you want to have in a room temperature let's say 20 degrees so probably you can have this much of air speed 0.13 which is more than enough and if you wanted to have a point uh, 26 degree then you can have prob probably 0.2 you know these are very important factors you know uh, like okay this is i'm talking about a comfort zone but probably even in our uh, homes also whosoever uses let's say window uh, acs or a split acs whosoever is using i mean people have a tendency you know uh, uh, to run ac and the fans both in that case and probably they increase the velocity at a, at a uh, more than two meter or 0.5 meter per second in a room or sometimes 0.6 meter I and mean, that's not the right thing to do that I mean, uh, ideally, uh, you know, if the human comfort, as I explained in the and as per Ashra also, it's it's very good to have a 24 and 0.17, uh, which we should do it. Then for you to general uh, guideline for you to understand, let's say you have a grill and uh, uh, you, you can install up to four meter uh, height and temperature dis difference, which can it can handle, you know, up to eight Kelvin or eight degree. This much of temperature difference it can handle and this this much of air performance we can actually provide any manufacturer can provide you now the diffusers same way diffuser cannot be used at a very high ceiling because the purpose of diffuser will lose so it should be used within a uh, within a three meter 
uh, height you know then it gives a really very nice airflow pattern probably i'll i'll explain you in in coming few slides and then it can handle uh, temperature even at a very higher uh, uh, you know uh, difference also comparison to the grill high induction slot diffuser we say that because it it can handle a very high temperature difference and same way i mean when the moment you say the temperature difference it can handle very high then of course the mounting height is more that then you have adjustable soil diffusers this this you can also install i mean it's not that it, this kind of diffuser can hang, go up to 15 meter in swirl diffuser there are various type of uh, swirl diffuser comes which can hand which can install in a ceiling at a height of 15 meter also and it can handle a temperature difference of delta 15k so these are the few high induction slot diffusers uh, high inductions uh, adjustable slot diffusers of course higher i mean whatever the products which gives a more higher inductions so you can understand that these are will not be cheaper also they, these products are expensive also but then then probably these simple products single numbers can solve the purpose of cooling and the mixing just to brief you an idea uh, uh, i think from previous slides probably you must have got some idea of uh, induction ratio in induction factor so same way it cor it corresponds to the air change rate grill has less than 8 ach high induction is very good till 14 and adjustable swirl diffusers which can install up to 15 meter height can less can less than 25 this thing you know it can handle that so i mean we say that air chain rate is i mean mixing is happening very faster way and they can they can actually have a higher throw also and it can have handle a air, higher air volume also it can handle a higher velocity also if it, these are installed at a higher height now these are a few typical air pattern if you can see this this is a ceiling you see uh, circular square rectangular linear diffusers this is the airflow pattern you have to install in between this is how the airflow pattern get then you have a, uh, uh, you can get uh, some kind of installation in such way you need only one direction probably so we call it perimeter ceiling you know and this is only have a one direction uh, flow pattern we sometimes you have to use a rectangular and a linear diffuser because square diffuser will never serve your purpose because a square diffuser distributes all around so that's that's not the right product so you have to use a linear and rectangular then you have a side wall side wall it's the uh, uh, install on a wall it hits the ceiling use a conda effect and have a light throw so this is like a more into linear grills and modular grills okay and then you have a cell or floor uh, type and just a few airflow pattern i would like to uh, uh, show you you know so that you have an idea how this these these products behave when they are installed because most of you probably not be knowing how these products are behaving so that's why i try to put something for you to understand you know these are the linear flow diffusers and this this is a modular linear grills and these are the modular linear grills okay but the positions are different this is installed on a floor this is installed on a wall you see this uh, jet fan uh, uh, sorry uh, jet diffusers uh, 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 we call it eyeball uh, nozzle type of uh, uh, product which is installed on a ceiling normally you must have seen the airflow pattern when they are installed on a wall but let's say we have installed on a ceiling and then what the airflow pattern is then you can see the cooling if it's there it always goes down and if you have a eating uh, because density is always lighter for a uh, uh, for, for a hot air you know so it loses that uh, projection it it will never go till end unless you put a very high air on this otherwise it loses its uh, projection and you have a less projection in case of heating application okay here are few things life you know uh, uh, i got these pictures from one of the lab and these are very very uh, uh, real time data i mean th these are the real pictures you see you see here uh, this is a free flow nozzle uh, uh, the product has been installed in a lab uh, and uh, it does not use a conda effect you remember where i have said that height should be less than 300 mm this is not conda effect is not using now you can see here your left and right of your screen there are four different flow patterns i mean you can be uh, say why there are flow patterns i mean these flow four different type flow patterns actually shows this is extreme right on the top where you have a higher throw this is more like when you have an isothermal condition you know where your delta t is zero and then you have a delta t's are different you can see that as the delta t becomes higher your throw reduces 
add it becomes less its throw increases you know when delta t becomes zero and then it's like this so this is the actual uh, uh, product performance and and which really gives you i mean it's also an eye opener you know normally we say these manufacturer products are not performing i mean we should know the reason why because the catalog given catalog performance are given based on isothermal conditions but in actually on site you never have isothermal condition right never have so what you have to do you have to use those table and the charts which i have shown you in order to find the accurate throw pattern accurate throw accurate terminal velocity at what distance the throw will be so that is very important and then in that case it will never happen that your site and the product will not perform at site you know okay and then I try to show you by using a conda effect. Here you see, see the Y is less than and it's a 50 mm. So I'm using a ceiling here. So conda effect, you can see that. And this is isothermal condition. You see the airflow pattern, it goes straight. But here it loses that, right? It loses its projection. Here delta T is higher than less, than less, and then here delta T is zero. So this is this is the actual product uh, tested in a lab, you know. And then the same product, same product installed in a ceiling. I think in most of a exhibition, large exhibition center, I do not know why, but then product people use this because uh, swell diffusers, higher induction swell diffusers are expensive comparison to this. So I've tried to uh, uh, use, show you the product performance of this product. You see, you see, ceiling, it goes straight and hit, goes straight. But as the delta T difference, you see it loses its throw, it loses its. So that's important for all of us to know what the delta T is. So that is what I wanted to want to emphasize here. Then there are uh, uh, product available in the market, you know, uh, uh, to avoid the complicacy, to avoid the last moment change. There are a product available in the market, you know, where you can have uh, multiple airflows in the same product and which is flexible at the side, you know. You have a one-way direction, you have a two-way direction, you have a three-way, you have a radial, and then you have a vertical. So these are these are physical and probably these nozzles, if you rotate on the side, and you can have this direction. So this kind of flexibility and the product is tested. And this is a real product performance effort. It really actually shows this. And then some slot diffusers. I wanted to show you the actual product performance. I mean there are a slot diffusers available in the market where you know you can have both vertical discharge like this sorry like vertical discharge like this and also you can have a radius of diffusion by using a conda effect so that is it's just that you need to adjust the blade of a slot diffuser on in the side or it can be balanced in the side and then you have both you know Sometimes you need a vertical, uh, let's say in, 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 in marriage hall or in office area you install and you want a straight projections, probably the same slot diffuser can act as this. But in somewhere you wanted to larger throw radius of diffusion, you can use the conda effect also. So that is the beauty of slot diffuser. And this is a, a real tested product. Okay, now let's let's talk uh, 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 this. What is this minimum radius of diffusion and maximum radius of diffusion? That's very important, you know. The right side of the picture you can see this is a maximum diffusion of radius of diffusion because when the product can install on a wall and it throws we call that the throw of that product but here when the product flows across the uh, ceiling we call this as a radius of diffusion the terminology changes i think i have tried to explain that right and also also uh, also that's very one thing more important for us to know that uh, a minimum radius of diffusion produced by largest available diffuser is greater than required throw it is probably you know particularly air terminal devices is unsuitable and this is what actually i wanted to highlight here uh, you know right selection of a product is very important never undersize or oversize a project right product is very important you know in order to have a proper room air velocity and a proper room air movement and no stagnation in an occupied zone then you have a linear grill airflow which you can see it here 
probably uh, this side uh, and then you can have on the both side and that's how double side wall supply is this is a maximum throw and maximum source it depends upon what kind of size you use then you have a grill spacing table probably sometimes it happens you know uh, in a in a long wall you install uh, 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 different different sizes in our different at a different different location at a different distance so probably we should know uh, this jet is spread and and based on that we should be putting a grill space you know in order to have a proper airflow that's very important and you know two is to one or five is to one this width to height ratio is actually gives you very very uh, better air deficient pattern than normal square grills normally which we use so these are very important because they have a less draft problem due to excessive drafts of the supply jet so that's very important okay and then sometimes we get uh, these kind of uh, punctured or sculptured or coffered ceilings you know and how to use the uh, uh, our uh, technology how to use the conda effect in order to have a large throw in order to have a large reach so this is the way probably we can use this and these are like you know a uh, stagnant area and actually you are not bothered about cooling these area so but you are using a conda effect because of these surfaces okay there are few few uh, I, I i think just few slides two three slides for you to know understand there are various types of products available in the market in the air wall family you know i've tried to segregate different wall families you know from a basic uh, toilet exhaust valves and goes up to you know uh, constant return air valves and then you have a different type of grills for different different applications probably we all know it's just uh, brushing your uh, um, uh, you know and then you have a different type of uh, again grills slot diffusers linear diffusers which i've explained this and then you have, we have floor and step diffusers available in the market and then you have various types of transfer and door grills and then these are you know de depending upon the families i've tried to divide you know there are various wall diffusers various grills and all that stuff and there are various circular diffusers so what i wanted to show you to you here you know there are a primary product then there are secondary product or low induction factor uh, product like grills and then we have a high induction packed uh, product like swell diffusers. so these kind of products are available in the market i mean we should be trying to use these products you know which which really saves a lot of energy if we are if these are used in the right way and then there are different kind of uh, uh, jet diffuser series are there depending upon a kind of application depending upon type of throw depending upon what distance depending upon the coverage there are various kind of uh, diffusers are available i mean which one should not stick to only one product i mean there are series of products available okay and then you have a displacement diffusers okay then you have a different type of air volume controllers in order to control and then give a right air distribution uh, pattern for this and then different type of fluors are there now uh, just quickly uh, i think uh, i hope i am uh, not running out of time i have few I have few more minutes to present, right, uh, yeah, Swamiji? Yeah, please, please, please. We have more than an hour. Okay, fantastic. So I hope you guys are uh, uh, not getting bored, and it's a Saturday evening. I hope. So anyway, uh, I I talk on the criteria of uh, ventilation design here. Uh, what the comfort is? I mean, ventilation is not always it. It goes with the fan you know and uh, or the base ventilation or the tunnel ventilation or the <coughs> normal cross uh, ventilation it's it's also comes with a comfort comfort ventilation you know what is actually demands it demands the temperature you can see the person sitting in a chair for example when he feel comfortable when there is a right kind of temperature when there is a right kind of required air volume when there is a right kind of air velocity and of course the right kind of carbon dioxide and of course the noise level these are the five parameters when the person has comfort and how we do that there are basically typically two two types of ventilation we call it mixing ventilation and then we call it displacement ventilation in a comfort system what is this mixing ventilation mixing ventilation is more like you are giving a supplier from the top it comes here it get mixes and it goes up and it is exhausted from the top we call it this as a mixing ventilation and what is displacement ventilation displacement ventilation is more like when you have a supplier from the bottom 
it gets here it 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 works on right either I, I would say it's more works on a conviction process i think you all we all of us know that and it you know supplier from the bottom it goes up and it get exhausted okay so these are the two uh, uh, ventilations available uh, mixing ventilation and displacement ventilation and if you try to understand more in a pictorial way ventilation by diffusion you need to give a higher is high air speed are installed at a three meter height two meter height or four meter height depending of area is which means you need to have a small nozzle of course throw it higher so you need to have a high wind and a higher exchange efficiencies. You can see it from the bottom. Air is blown in from one or more air or stream outside the occupied zone. Okay, this is the ventilation by diffusion. And then you have a ventilation by displacement. You see it here. This is a product install here, a displacement. It comes here, and this is your occupied zone. And here, this is your occupied zone. So here, you can have a low speed air because your comfort or occupied zone is closer to the displacement which means you need to have a low speed here okay which means you are spending less money because otherwise you need to install a fan on the back of it at a higher uh, uh, or the hu uh, fan at a very higher uh, static pressure but here you need it less because you need not to pump in uh, the air with a higher velocity you need a low velocity and you need to have a larger diffuser of course large diffuser because you wanted to have a less velocity no so you need to have a larger area which gives a less velocity vertical temperature gradient can get too high because if this is a place and let's say it's a 10 meter height then then of course the temperature will be too large but you are least bothered what is happening on the top because we are bothered with the occupied zone and then you have a large back area you see i mean i think this this picture explains you what is the explanation i mean what is the conviction processes a lady working with the computer and this generates a heat right human energy human extract human energy which is getting extracted and then exhausted and then computer energy and these are energies you know what happens if you see here there is a displacement diffuser which is which is red in color of course this can be given at any uh, uh, architecture color so you know normally what manufacturer does it if you have a, such a large area which has a very high height it does a cfd analysis we call it computational fluid dynamics we does a cfd analysis what is the right location of these displacement diffusers in that particular area once you install it so what happens is that you know only these uh, 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 we call it comfort boundaries it starts after a certain distance because these are the areas probably you will have a higher velocity but probably the person does not go in this area now what happens you know air cold air being a heavier in density it flows parallel to the floor as it gets heat it loses its its temperature and goes up you know when the cold air gets in contact with this heat area the temperature rises and it goes up because uh, uh, it it loses its density you know cold cold air is heavier in density and uh, hot air is lighter in density so when the temperature increases it loses its density and it goes up so that's the convection process and that's what uh, on which the displacement ventilation works now you can see the comfort by seeing the picture itself uh, a person this is a displacement person is relaxed sitting relaxed and person is is getting mixed why this picture what picture this explains you you know when you are giving a fresh water from the top in the existing water what happens the whole water fresh water mixes with the existing water which means that probably this gentleman will not have the fresh water all the time you know your i mean the quality of fresh water is not that good here what happens you are supplying the fresh thing from the bottom which means which directly gets in contact with here and it feels fresh and that's what the temperature is needed it feels fresh you know and then it goes up and it gets exhausted just to outline about the mixing ventilation uh you know 
outline is what supplier is introduced at high level i explained mixes with the room air distributes the contaminants throughout the room diluting concentrated areas can be used to supply either warm or cool air it can be used okay supplier temperature approximately 12 to 14 degree 18 degree depending upon what type of application is so this is like more like just to outline and the, what is the advantage can be used to supply air temperatures above and below the room temperature can be used for cooling and heating uniform temperature throughout the room okay there will not be any variance in the temperature and suitable for supplying large amount of cool air okay and quick recovery of airflow after disturbances that's also because supply and exhaust happens on the top and then there is a quick recovery so what is it because every every system has advantage and disadvantages and so what are disadvantages you have a uniform concentration of contaminants throughout the room uniform concentration of contaminants throughout the room i mean we can learn from our day-to-day uh, -day life you know that's why we always say that never switch on the ceiling fan why because your all hot air bad air goes up on the top of roof and what you are doing you're running the fan and you are again pumping it back to the occupied zone so which means what you are mixing the whole air even the uh, bad air which, which which has gone up you are again bringing it and then you are mixing it so there will be a uniform concentration of contaminants for the room risk of short circuiting airflow it 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 happens and sometimes in most of the sites i have noticed that there could there could be a chances you know uh, supply and return air are very close and since on both the cases the uh, fans are used so probably the fresh air comes and and some portion of it getting exhausted directly so we call that process short circuiting you know so you are not that room is not getting the required amount of fresh air which is actually it needs then you have a potential for drafts high cooling capacity is required okay obstacles are in path of supplier sometimes dots could be also created you know i explained you uh, uh, you have light fixtures and all that which comes in the supply so you drops is possible oh shit okay uh, uh, obstacles are in path of supplier and draws could be created lower supplier temperature required approximately 12 to 14 degrees celsius which means it requires more cooling and larger ventilation plant is needed if you have to supply uh, air at a 12 to 14 degrees celsius so this is what are all about mixing ventilation but let's say let's say if we talk about displacement diffuser displacement ventilation outline let's talk first air is supplied directly into the occupied zone air is extracted at a high ceiling level okay makes sense because uh, fresh air is from the bottom and exhaust is from the top does not mix with the existing air in the room okay it is because it works on convection process which i explained it air cold air is going loses its temperature and goes up so the whole air is not getting mixed okay and velocity of supplier is very low it's, it's it's very comfortable and supplier temperature you are working on 19 degrees celsius instead of 14 or 13 or 16 degree which you have worked uh, working on a mixing ventilation where you need more energy here you need a less energy replaces the convection currents of air rising upwards removing contaminants creates the stratification air causes a little mixing of contamination low concentration in occupied zone this is very important factor low air velocity low turbulence reduced cooling capacity higher supply air temperature than mixing system so of course you are using a uh, less energy no um, and then free cooling is achieved by using outside air when it is below uh, supply air temperature when when actually you get it you know just use a filter and use it what is disadvantages it is not good for heating application of course in, in in india it doesn't matter except in up north but otherwise it is not good for heating applications and it requires a floor space sometimes people does not have that also and then its cooling capacity is limited because you know for the same cooling capacity you need to have a larger diffuser you know because you wanted to have a less air velocity so cooling capacity is limited and risk of draft normally it is within uh, the comfort uh, boundary uh, this can overcome but this has a risk of draught just to show you the comparison here the jet controlled and the floor master just to just to uh, show you this <coughs> energy remains the same okay mass always remains the same we call it m1 v1 and m2 v2 mass remains the same same amount of if you if your this terminal velocity is fixed you know you see here 
the same air from the flow uh, displacement diffuser you are giving at a speed of 0.5 meter per second but the same air from the top you are giving it 4 meter per second which means you are losing energy right because you have to run a fan which can deliver air at a 4 meter per second but here you have to have a fan with a lesser static pressure and which can give air at 0.5 mass remains the same guys you have to see this mass remains the same now you have a jet control you have a drought risk area here because you have a directly supply it here probably it may happen this is your comfort area so there is a, there, there is a you can have a, either you have a very high cooling or less cooling it depends but it does doesn't matter you are not uh, you are least bothered happen just clean any designer exactly closer to the flow master you will have a bit of higher velocity otherwise there's no negative point and this is good very good this product is very good for a large area not for a i mean i would never recommend to use this flow diffuser in a one room or one cabin no i will never uh, rec recommend that this is just to show you the comfort boundary how the uh, the dis uh, this displacement diffuser the airflow pattern comes out to be yeah, this is just to show you uh, in light activity what is the uh, terminal velocity you should have at 21 degrees Celsius and 26 degrees Celsius room temperatures. In, in case of 21, this is the velocity you can have. In 26, you can have this. And you know, comfort boundaries again, as I said, it depends on standards, official research, own experience, and testing. It really depends. It it varies from project to project. It it varies from uh, owner to project owner to project owner. Few, few installation applications in MACD you can see it here you have a displacement diffuses because this normally have a large area and you can have a large air velocity you know you can have a large air volume here because multiple diffusers will not solve your purpose then this product which will have a very large amount of air coming out at a very low velocity of course the uh, you have a duct here which is coming out and then you can decorate it beautifully as you want and this is also in a uh, displacement diffuser you know which you can see it here and then in, in, in shopping complex and in, in, in mall and all that, you know. Yeah, and uh, here also you can see here uh, at the airports, normally you see that when there is a uh, entry and exit, you can see there in swimming pool, you can have this here because you really, really need a very large amount of air because you have a very high humid area and then you can have this. In a Zim also, a Zim is a perfect thing, you know, because Diffuser normally if you use in a gym or okay nowadays I mean people most of people are using a split AC and all but if it is a centrally air conditioned if you are using a diffuser in some cases you you have a very higher velocity a lot of chances you will have a lot of stagnant area but diffuser this kind of product will can handle a large amount of air you just need to do a CFT analysis what is the right location and which equipment in a gym is releasing more heat uh, and 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 by doing which uh, uh, equipment uh, uh, exercise it will release more energy so based on that uh, doing safety analysis you can put a right product at the right place so just to uh, uh, remind again that large area and radial air distribution it is good for that it's efficient low turbulence <coughs> circular air supply distribution short comfort boundaries low sound level easy layout and then high ventilation efficiently quality based function so these are the few few things of the positive side which probably which all uh, uh, we should know this and last i think uh, this is uh, my uh, last slide which i wanted to explain you that and i will try to connect with the first slide also just to if you remember my first slide requirement of indoor environment control is very very important you know it's very i mean it requires a controlled air movement it depends it's a mixing or uh, displacement but we should be knowing it shape size and ceiling height of the building that is also very important you know now let's say few products ceiling and slot diffusers are ideal for buildings for comfort you know with a limited ceiling height but for a large for large buildings with a large ceiling height maybe Maybe I would say a sidewall mounted outlets are recommended. 
not the ceiling ones or you use a higher induction wall diffusers so shape size and ceiling height of a building is very important to select the right air terminal products volume flow rate per unit floor is also very important volume flow rate per outlet is also very important and of course the right sizing never ever because of price you take a product under size and also in order to match the symmetry in your uh, uh, comfort area or in your offices never use a oversized product because both are dangerous because both will destroy your airflow pattern and both will destroy your terminal velocity in a room so you have to actually use a right sizing of the product this is what i have explained on the first second slide of my presentation then uh, you have a throw now i mean okay if you have a product installed on a wall then you have a throw if a product installed on a ceiling you have a radius of diffusion okay so that is also very very important whether the square ceiling diffuser gives a more throw or circular diffuser uh, ceiling diffuser gives a more throw or swirl diffuser so we have to actually choose a right product in order to have a right throw we cannot choose a product uh, uh of soil diffuser in such a case where height is less than two meter which gives a higher throw because it destroys your comfort in occupied zone okay and then you have a noise level because if you don't do ever five parameters you will have a turbulent velocity you will you will have also chance that air outlet will have a more pressure drop and which in turn gives you more pressure uh, noise level so which you would not like to have it any any architect or consultant would not like to have it so that is also very important to select the right product so that you have a less noise level and also uh, also any air distribution product is selected the pressure drop should not be more than 50 pascal otherwise please change your product except those product except those product i repeat except those product which are installed at 15 meter 10 meter at height then case is different because you are putting a higher velocity but if it if you are using in a comfort zone in offices and in uh, schools and uh, uh, it offices your pressure drop of air terminal devices should not be more than 50 pascals please please understand that because uh, 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 let's say slot diffuser gives a pressure drop of uh, 12 to 50 pascal okay but the same diffuser probably gives uh, uh, five pascal but then airflow is different a slot diffuser can handle higher air diffuser can handle less air so we have to also choose a rice product and then appearance on the top of it when you are when you have gone through all this when you have crossed all this then you have to of course look for appearance if you are looking inside because we say you know seeing is a believing what you see is actually uh, believable so uh, uh, right quality of products at the end of the day you have to also see appearance is important and then at last you should look for a cost when you have seen all the points above then at last you should look for the cost so uh, this is what i have to say in a today's uh, presentation i hope i have been able to uh, uh, give some information and share some knowledge and uh, and uh, you must be uh, got some some how how uh, good the air terminal product should be and what product we should select uh, i would say thank you for your uh, attention and the time if you have any questions you can always uh, uh, speak uh, or talk or i can i'll i'll try to answer yeah thank you mr parish uh, we have some questions uh, i just need yeah. to take the control uh, for a second or uh, uh, can i also see on some chat box at uh, the question yeah i'll shall ask, ask the questions on your behalf so okay okay one second so it's, i am sure it's a very a thing which was very knowledgeable for all of us and it's a very nice presentation which we had and thank you there was uh, something which was i believe important factors about air distribution which many of us including me would not be knowing so much in detail and actually affects the entire effectivity of the you know, movement of air in such a wonderful way okay 
So I got a question uh, from Mr. Sudeep. You can see the chat box also. Uh, is to where to use swill diffusers? Any specific criteria do you have? Uh, in chat box, I could not see that. Oh, I'll ask you the question on his behalf. Where okay. To, uh, yeah, where to use the swell diffuser? Any specific criteria? Uh, well, I would say where you need more mixing and where you need uh, right uh, uh, air distribution product and uh, where you have a floor height up to 5 meter height. And uh, because swirl has a very higher induction factors, and uh, and when in combination with, uh, uh, I mean, in one of the slide I have uh, uh, shown talked about ADPI also. When you have a mix of swirl diffusers, probably, uh, then it gives a very AD, ADPI more than eighty percent, which means that it is really effective for occupied zone. I would say it's good for a system where you need a right air distribution where you need a right air distribution where you need a right mixing of air and uh, uh, of course it's, it's it it comes with a cost for sure but it's good for a four to five meter it can handle more air so i would not say that you can't use an office of course you can use an office but i will never recommend if you have a, a, a height less than three meter i will never recommend i would always recommend if you have a height more than three meter i will always recommend in that way and and height should also be not more than six meter if we talk about the basic world diffusers okay uh, for the benefit of the participants i would request them to stay back because uh, there are some very important information and uh, you know, to be shared to all the participants so i would request not to leave the presentation right now uh, there's one more question which has come across is that uh, uh, one second yeah what is the best system for displacement ventilation dx type or chill water type See, I would never uh, uh, say that it's a uh, best system of whether DX type or uh, chill uh, type. I would uh, say, I, I would uh, suggest in, in this way, you know, this is very good. It's it's very uh, uh, good uh, in a kind of a system where you have a large open area. Let's say uh, you have a lobby area in a hotel, you know, which has a very large area. You are You can have a DX type, you can have a chill water type and uh, but then uh, if you are not using in a right place any of the system will not work so op and then uh, when you have a large open area and where uh, uh, and and where there is not a multiple crowd we say that lobby uh, why i say lobby or why i say a big theater system or why i say a big classrooms because these are the area we know the defined people we are uh, the, these are the areas we know how many people are going to come how many people are going to sit and all that stuff you know and because uh, here main i think in one of the slide i try to show you that uh, displacement diffuser has has a one disadvantage uh, the person who comes closer to the displacement diffuser will have an uncomfort zone otherwise otherwise this is the best system to go for it so it could be good for a chill water type Right. So uh, there's a question from Sudip. Sudip also that in maintaining the supply air temperature of 19 degree with DX type is very difficult. So you already answered that question. Uh, yeah. For the benefit of the participants, could I ask you, uh, could I put up a request uh, that can we share the presentation to the participants? Yeah, of course. Why not? Thank you. So I have shared my yeah. email ID on the chat box for all the participants to send in the mails only after filling up okay. the feedback forms. And those participants who are Ishre members, only they get the privilege of having this presentation. So please mention your okay. uh, yeah. Ishre membership number when you write a mail to me. And uh, thank you, Mr. Parish. I, I, there are no more questions uh, in this regard. And it was really a very informative oh. point. And 